curious as to why we started with Skype. I, I understand I understand that it's a, a well-known and generally well-working program, but I also know from experience that it's a program that doesn't work well over bad internet connections. Yeah. So hi, Yannicka. We're, we're now broadcasting and we're kind of talking about why Google Hangout versus Skype. And um, Jeffrey, we had planned to go with Google Hangout. And we'd done some testing um, with Martin and Shahab and everything was fine. And then when they tried to test it inside the university, we couldn't get it to work. So uh, this was kind of at the last oh, minute, okay. so we went to Skype. Oh, so we st so we still need. Okay, that makes yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually on the Wi-Fi right now, and I actually think uh, my camera, you know, they thought, okay, the bandwidth isn't that big, so let's cut off the camera. So that's, but that's just <laughs> what I think. By the way, I can test that. Okay. Jeffrey, are you at There's home or on campus? No, I'm at home right now. Yeah. Because I like but the multiple I asked, cameras. Um, someone on... Yes, I do. <laughs> now I asked someone on campus, or at least I asked someone for, from my year if he could um, join in from campus. Mm -hmm. And he said he would, but I yeah, I haven't heard anything from him since. I sent him a message as well, but he hasn't replied yet. So, but I'm on campus okay. right now. Because sound-wise, it's working really well. I'm not sure if you can see our video feeds properly. Uh, what video? Well, you are extremely blurry, Geoffrey, okay. and Nancy is, uh, is is very clear, and I'm just invisible. <laughs> <laughs> there is. A, I'm not sure if it, if, it might, if it might help, but there's an option at the top right corner, uh, next to the shutdown button, and it's in between the camera button and the shutdown button. Mm -hmm. And if you click on that, you can set your your um, your speed. I want to put it on the low internet connection. Mm. That's that might help. That's interesting. See, I already learned something. Excellent. It was worth the time. <laughs> no, really? it was also worth the time because I'm starting to get a sense of Jeffrey, a face, a voice, a sense of humor that is really difficult with me being just one screen in the classroom and all the rest of people being spread out. So yes. with Google Hangouts, we could start doing a little bit more real people interaction. Yeah. I'm pro that. I'm actually considering, uh, the, you know, for maybe next week, we can definitely try it out mm -hmm. as long as the Wi-Fi holds it. Do you have the ability to plug into a, a hard connection within the classroom someplace? Uh, we have some. Uh, however, the thing is, and I'm not sure if that's still the case, but uh, usually the plugins only work for the computer they are intended for. So if you plug into any anything else, then sometimes it just won't recognize the device and doesn't. Then it doesn't work. Mm. But that's, so that's something worth uh, looking into. And next to that, there are uh, a few devices who are uh, uh, which are in Area 51. So and they are connected, but they don't have cameras of, of their own. Mm. So, <laughs> <laughs> but so we, we no, we have about four webcams uh, uh, the staff uses, so we can just plug those in. But I'm not sure how well the computers of the Hague University will accept Google Hangout. I actually think zero. Zero commitment from the computers. Mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's not so good. Zero commitment. Right. Yeah, so. I thought Shahab mentioned that. He said, Google Hangout, the computers at school, they don't really click. So I wonder if we should set one meeting where everybody is at their homes or different places so everybody's not in the classroom and we try something like, or maybe the groups are spread in different places and we try a totally virtual meeting. Mm -hmm. I think that would be really interesting. I think, yeah, we have to, because then you have to take into consideration that you can only have 10 people in one Google Hangout at once. Yeah, but if you put so we like, might have to group people. Yeah, exactly. Put you know five people on a computer. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that might work. So we have nine groups with Nancy makes ten. Then no other tutors are invited. 
<laughs> Works for me. <laughs> <laughs> no tutors. Oh, dirty glasses. <laughs> Yeah. Tutor free zone. <laughs> a tutor free zone. Well, you know, you guys just have your own meeting. You don't need us anyway. I mean, come on. Yes, we can just tutor each other. <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> so before, when we did our first effort, before we turned the recording on, Jeffrey was telling me about, um, you know, he's got people following his Tumblr blog who aren't in the class. Oh, really? So did you find yeah, out I've got who they some are? five followers. Actually, it's quite a, it's kind of interesting. As far as I'm aware, two of them are Tumblr magazines. What are Tumblr magazines? It's like um, it's people who basically started the Tumblr to post. Um, it's like a magazine, only then online. So they they post my articles online. Yeah, so it's mm -hmm. aggregating. Okay. Yes. <laughs> So I've got two followers that are that followed that, and I've got um, Kudio, who's from my from from our class. Mm -hmm. And I've got another person. I have no idea who it is. What's the name? <laughs> name? Uh, oh, hey, that's Mister. Um, that's Marta. Ah. I would have you never have guessed no that from his name. <laughs> Mohandas Thiessen? Yeah, it says Yano Momano. <laughs> and I was like, who is that? <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> So, you know, it's interesting to think. So, if, but I thought it was pretty interesting. Yeah, so, you know, who would be interested in our, you know, our project the site or the Tumblr blogs? Who do you think would be interested? I think a lot of people, I think especially... If, the curious youth, you know, I'm someone who's very curious and I constantly want to find out things and I think that people who are in on that and people who are in on sharing experiences would love blogs like these. Yeah, or you know, I think about people who are activists who are trying to figure out how to tap social media for their, you know, for their activist work, um, designers, you know, because I think people realize there's potential out there but there's not a lot of shared practice about how to do it. So, mm -hmm. you know, what's useful? How to do it? Yeah, that's true. We were talking about that a while ago, because um, I was talking with a few friends of mine, and we were talking about poetry slams, mm -hmm. and we're actually we're very likely to organize one through Google Hangout and just make it a public um, public event. We're like, that would be really cool to do because it's it's something totally new, you know, like having an actual show through Google Hangout. There, you know, so it's, it's, actually, it's there's a the... bunch of artists who are now using Google Hangouts. Do you know? Um, oh God, what's his name? He's a science fiction writer, and his wife is a performance artist, and her first name is Amanda, and she plays the ukulele. Oh. Right. Oh, Neil I Gaiman. No idea. Neil Gaiman, the science fiction writer, and his wife Amanda something or other. They do performance art on Google Hangouts now, and oh, that's brilliant. Uh, yeah. So I think you know you should also kind of put the word out there who's doing performance art on Google Hangouts. In fact, I could tweet it right now and see if anybody responds. Let's see. Let me see. I like that. I'm curious as well. I'll retweet your tweet, Nancy. Once you've posted it. <laughs> I'm loving this Twitter sphere. Like I, I made a Twitter account not too long ago, and it was basically just for me as an artist to, to get out there a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And at some moments, I find it absolutely impossible to post anything, and I feel like everything I post is so irrelevant. Like. There's nothing. I mean, every now and then I post a serious discussion and that goes on. But for the rest, it's just me mm -hmm. being bored. And I'm like, oh, let me tweet, let me tweet something. <laughs> ah. I've had an a, a extensive, a very intensive time of my life where I tweeted a lot. And now mm -hmm. for the past few months, it has decreased enormously. Look who has joined us. Hi, Marta. Hi. Hello. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> We're having a little morning evening party here. Oh yeah, it's good. Well, I'm actually in the process of cooking, but I'm waiting for the spaghetti to, uh, well, to get uh, to get edible. So I thought, well, why not join in? <laughs> so you've got a six-minute window <laughs> till al dente. Yeah, well, four at the moment, actually. Yeah. <laughs> well, but, uh, I like it a little bit soft. Like I wasn't the only one talking about food. So yeah, I gotta well, tell you. Immediately, Jane Bozarth retweeted my tweet, okay? Jane Bozarth, let's see how many followers she has. This woman has like a zillion followers. Let's see. I, I retweeted your tweet as well, Nancy. Well, and you have two <laughs> zillion too. followers, right? 
Well, thank you. <laughs> I used to have a, a, a lot of followers, but most of them were Eastern European hookers. <laughs> Please stop. No more. <laughs> okay. So Jane has 7,430 followers. So That's and so she's nice. very active in the e-learning world. Mm -hmm. um, uh, both, I'll put her URL in the chat chat zone. So you know we ought to get something good off of this. Let's see where'd True. the chat window go. Chat window, where are you? It's at the top left, next yeah. to a screen share. Yeah, it's, this is, I have a focal distance problem with, with bifocals. Either I have to get close and take them off, or I have to go far away and leave them on. But the actual <laughs> thing is no place in the middle, and I can't see. We need uh, um, the uh, gas from from both pannen. Nice shot of Martin's ear. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm instructing my son to, to, to lower the fire. Will you the gas even lager zet? Okay. Okay, see, it's nice to have a, a sous chef with you there. Yeah. <laughs> Keeps him from the telly. That's right. And cooking is a better skill for luring a partner anyway than television watching skills. <laughs> yeah, sorry. He, he just came back and asked me which one. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, um, in November, I'm doing a presentation for a German company online about informal learning and, and how that's a part of everything and I just think about here, here we're talking about hangouts, blogging, um, yeah, yeah. design, and pasta cooking, and parenting. All, <laughs> All at the same time. This is inform <laughs> informal learning optima forma. Optima forma, yes. So what else do you want oh, to talk um, about, Jeffrey? Nancy, do you have the YouTube link? Um, let's see, do I have the YouTube? It doesn't give you the link until after it's over. Oh, oh so you can't watch it live? Well, if, you're, if you go look on the Google Hangout page, let me just, um, it should be showing live on the Google Hangout page. You just have to click um, it. Okay, let me see. Um, but since you're in it, I don't think you can watch it. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> it's sort of this... Because um, I wanted to post the link under the event page. Some people were asking for it. Look who joined us. Yay, hey, it works. <laughs> hey. Hey. I know. We should name ourselves. Hey. We should name something. Name ourselves. What were you doing? <laughs> I was the Talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are they online yet? Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> Talk English. <laughs> yes, of course. So, hi, how are you doing? Great. Fine. <laughs> oh, there's you. two of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it. what uh, Jeffrey did, which I thought was really useful, is he put that little lower third thing, so he put his name, and now oh. Martin has added his. And maybe you guys could do one with yours. It's up on the top. It says lower third. Or do you have to install that plugin before it shows up? Um, you have to install it. You guys, if you, if you go next to um, Google Docs, you see something that says add application or install app? Yep. Once you click on that, you'll see uh, you'll see like a grid of apps, and you have to click on the lower third app. Oh wait, By the way, Janneke, Janneke, am I the only one not not seeing your video? No, I'm <laughs> invisible. Uh, I'm invisible. <laughs> okay. Apps, apps, apps. Oh, apps. Lower third. This is four-handed app application work. You've got both of you on the keyboard. Mm, just go. Okay. So one of you that is Aisha. Some fast typing. One of you is Aisha, and who's the other one? Uh, she, she is what? Aisha. Uh, Aisha, I'm Aisha. You're Aisha, and you're Juliana. Juliana, okay, great. See, with the with the Skype video, when I see you guys, your little heads are like this tiny. tiny uh, yes. <laughs> That's <even> better. <laughs> and so we were saying, if we could get each group on a on a computer. Then we yeah. could actually have more of this. Yeah, face it would to be face. great. But most of the computers in uh, in the oh. uh, at the university they don't have a camera, so they should do it on their own laptop. And then mm -hmm. we might have the problem that we experienced last time. They really need to plug in with a cable. So we were the thinking the wireless on on, uh, 
uh, in, in, in the university doesn't have enough bandwidth for, well, that's what we experienced last time. Yeah, so what if everybody did it from different locations? One group went to yeah. a cafe, one group went to someone's house who had good connectivity, and we actually do a totally virtual meeting. That would be great. Why can't you see I would it? love that. It would also solve the problem that people are sort of melting in the afternoon, <laughs> because they would all be in different places. Uh, and they beer. can, you know, join from a bar if they wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> or we would notice definitely. We'd so have a drinking, a drinking uh, meeting. Yeah, the only thing I'm drinking is two liters of water. <laughs> and I've, I've had, had students in my, yeah, I've had two students in my class after they went to the bar. That's not really advisory. Oh. No. <laughs> so, Juliana and Aisha, is it working for you? Yay! Yeah, I think backwards. backwards. It shows backwards for you, but it shows right for us. It's good. Okay. Great. Yeah. So that's perfect. So this is really helpful for those of us who can't keep names and faces straight. You know, this is having it's like a virtual name tag. Hi, my name is. <laughs> it kind of reminds you of news reporters who have their like name at the lower box to see what they're talking about. <laughs> Or you could change it and then just, you know, let's see what happens if I change what's yeah. on my lower third. Let's see. So Aisha and Juliana, what we've been doing is just playing around and getting to know each other. Um, so if you want to bring up a topic, please go ahead. Uh, okay. I, don't know. I don't know what Hi, to say. Well, I'm cooking. Hi, Jan. Hello. Hi. <laughs> so we're really multi generational now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, Jan, have you done a lot of Google Hangouts? Sorry? Mm, not really. <laughs> have you cooked much pasta? No, I don't. <laughs> Who are you, you talking to? I don't know, since there are so many faces. So. I'm Jeffrey. Hello, Jeffrey. <laughs> Ayesha. <laughs> Juliana. Hi. Hi. I'm Yannicka. I'm invisible. Hi. I'm the ninja. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we could call you Ninja Yannicka now. And I'm Nancy and I'm in the United States, but I think you've heard me talk to your dad already before a number of times. Yeah. Because <laughs> he usually talks to me when he's at home in the evening, because I am nine hours in a different time. <laughs> Nancy Chocolate. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd play around with that a little bit. Uh. I'm... So, so um, Aisha and Juliana and Jeffrey, um, what brought you to the Hague University? Uh -huh. uh, that's an interesting one. <laughs> um, I studied um, industrial design at Techno University in Delft first. Mm -hmm. And after my first year, I don't know. It was I. I didn't really like the way they did the course, and I didn't really feel at home there. And that was reflected on my grades. And after the first year, it was a better choice for me to move on to Den Haag University, back into the international environment I'm used to, and then for, for that, give it another try over here. And I'm really liking it for now. <laughs> yeah, so you, you've lived in many countries already, right? Um, I've lived in two countries and then many different places within the country. Mm -hmm. Aisha and Juliana, how about you? Oh, uh, well... <laughs> I always wanted to study abroad, and um, it felt really interesting for me studying, you know, design and even not just industrial design, you know, in general, because it's a field that I don't know much about it. But I just felt like it was good for me, and um, I found the Netherlands, <laughs> and through the, the Nafik site, the Nafik website, there was there was like a list of all the Dutch universities with, you know, English programs, and that's how I found the egg. Just and where's home? Sorry, where, where is, is home? Oh, my country, you mean? Mm -hmm. oh, Italy. <laughs> ah, che bella! 
<ride> io, io, come se, come se, uh, io non capisco l'italiano, uh, but I'll be in Italy in three weeks. Oh, cool, where are you going? Roma. Oh, great. My oh, I have lots of clients in Rome. Oh, I see. And Aisha, how about you? Um, well, two years ago I studied at the medical school, medical school in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. And afterwards I quit because it, that was something I don't want to live with for the rest of my life. So I changed course into this program, I guess. <laughs> that I, I guess this would probably fit me than medical schools. Yeah, they're quite different, man. That's yeah. very different. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. But it's been a struggle, you know. Uh, I haven't had the support of my family yeah. to, to quit from the medical school. Mm. Right now. But, um, yeah. Oops. That's, uh, that's tough when, you, when your family wants something different for you. Yeah. Uh, when I talk about this matter, I tend to get pretty emotional, so we can, can we just skip? <laughs> okay, fair, fair, that's fair, that's fair. Yeah. Um, so, but how are you finding the program so far? It sounds like you guys have had a very intensive beginning four weeks. Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> I think, the, like, for me, the first three weeks that I joined a week later have been hilarious, just... It's very much, it's, it's fun in one way, but it's just funny to see everything develop and everyone trying to figure out how everything is working. And, and basically in the first two weeks, I think everyone was confused about everything. And like slowly you can see like things look clarifying and then people finding their way. And, and I'm kind of used to that because because my previous university had started exactly the same, like having no clue what you're doing for the first week. But, but it's fun watching everything slowly develop and slowly finding your way and figuring out what you're doing and, and that you can do certain things that aren't written in the guidelines but just to take initiative. Cool. I applaud for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so with that, I had to change the tagline on my, um, my little lower third. <laughs> <laughs> my side. It's Speaking so, of Julia, chocolate, I'm going to buy some chocolate chip cookies. I'm going to bake some chocolate chip cookies soon. Mmm. I want some now. Maybe. <laughs> you too, Jan. You want some chocolate chip cookies instead of spaghetti? Really, I love it. Um, I'm not sure. Probably I would choose spaghetti. I prefer it. Yeah. A pasta è belle, sì. I love cookies. But... Uh, <laughs> I love all food, unfortunately. If you could see the lower half of my body, you'd know this is true. <laughs> <laughs> so, Juliana, how, how have the first weeks been for you? Uh, not that um, funny. <laughs> like, um, you know, the school system in Italy is very, uh, not strict, but it's very structured and mm -hmm. defined. And when I started here, the first two weeks, I was like, what am I doing here? <laughs> Who am I? I'm just completely confused. And that was bad. I was getting like, you sick. That, that, que way. that question, who am I, is such a brilliant, brilliant question. It's a good question to have. <laughs> I think it's a nice question, but I have a bit of a problem with it when I can't talk about it for five years. <laughs> well, don't feel bad. I, I didn't really discover my working passion till I was 40. Okay. Because <laughs> so, I think it's, it's, yeah. such a, it's a funny question because there's so much you can say. I mean, there's so many different levels of who you are, you know? I mean, there's, there's personality device, there's passions, there's, there's, it's such a broad topic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People, we have we really have to leave. Our food is on the table. Goodbye. <laughs> it. It was great fun. Enjoy your Just food. You Bye. Bye. Jan, Bye. thanks for joining us. <laughs> yes. Buon appetito. Buon appetito. <laughs> <laughs>
It's funny. Google Hangout seems to lend itself to laughter. Yes, yes. I agree. Because like everyone's in their very personal, relaxed comfort zone. Ah, no video whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> and Jeffrey's taking us on a tour there. Yes, we're going to my kitchen. I've got to cook for my housemates before they starve. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. So, one of the things that I observe when you do open learning, such as with our blogs and our website, is mm -hmm. you're creating part of your digital identity. And this is actually starts building into your professional identity. So later on when someone says, well, are you good at learning in a flexible or somewhat chaotic situation, you could say, oh yeah, look at this. I've done it. So, it's really great preparation for the work world in many ways, yes. although it's sometimes a little crazy making. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think it's well. I, we we spoke about this. I didn't actually read the replies yet because I didn't have time. But we spoke about this on the previous um, week discussion. Mm -hmm. And I said that for now, our generation is very much using social media as as a as a social call. You know, to talk to friends or communicate with people who you who you talk to on a day to day basis or who you want to talk to on a day to day basis. But I feel like as we're getting older, we're going to start using it as a more professional thing, you know? Like we're going to start making them for, for our classes and for, for our work, and we're going to start using them like that. So I'm really interested to see how that's going to be changing over the, over the next few years. It's changed also, already. I'm also yeah, interested true. into uh, seeing whether how the term professional and personal develops mm. in the next few years. Because yeah. now we're saying professional life as it is a total different you as from your personal self. Yeah, uh, true. Looking forward to how that is merging. It's already merging, but how it's merging and how that will show in the yeah. use of online identities or media. Yeah, my, my, my personal and professional lives are very intertwined. The boundary that I draw is I don't blog or write or talk about my family members without their explicit permission. So okay. you don't see pictures of my granddaughter online because her mother prefers that that doesn't happen yet, even though she's very active on social media. But other mm -hmm. than that, my you know the life of my mind and the life of my world are one. But of course, maybe that's an artifact of being 54 years old. <laughs> I don't know. For me, I like to keep them very separate. And for me, my professional life is just my my school life for now. But I like to well, my school life in the sense of like for me, it becomes professional in the moment I start talking about teachers and all. And I like to keep a very clear boundary bef between the two because that's how I've been brought up. Like in Nigeria, you have a very great sense of respect for your elders and for your teachers. That's and, nice. And <laughs> yeah, I know that it's, I'm very used to that. That's why I find it very weird as well now to call some of my tutors by their first name. I, like, I'm oh, very yes. used to calling people yeah. Miss something. Okay, see, I'm not the only one. I thought it's really awkward for me, and I feel very disrespectful when I do so. And, and part of keeping that respect yeah. is, is um, keeping a very clear boundary between who are your friends and who are your teachers. Mm -hmm. And Facebook and all social media have always been for my friends. And right now I'm like finding ways to deal with having teachers on there as well. Not that I don't want them on there, but it's, it's, it's a very different sense of interaction for me. Yeah, uh, that question came to mind for me as I'm getting friend requests on Facebook. And I'm thinking, you know, what, what is the appropriate boundary here? Should I friend them or should I make a separate list? And so being able to join a group without having to friend everyone for me is a very useful thing because then I don't have to immediately make that decision. Mm -hmm. but the other yes. thing for me is, because I'm not in school, I mean the world is my graduate school on a day-to-day -day basis, is that my friends are my teachers. Yes. And my teachers are my friends. So, it, it, so once I'm out of the institution, that whole set of relationships shifts. Yes, yes. entirely. And you need to sort of find a, a, a sort of comfortable group of people around you with which you can, with whom you can reflect and sort of, you know, yeah. bounce ideas off and on. And I think by by starting to build that kind of community of people around you already when you start studying, then sort of it stabilizes, or you have a more stable ground to build on. Okay, I'm not sure if that was any clear, but... <laughs> yeah, I agree. I understand what you mean. <laughs> no, you should have seen my, my hand signatures with it, but there's no video, so... <laughs> this is, this is, this is, this is. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Juliana, yeah, think... Aisha, what do you think? Sorry. <laughs> bang, bang. <laughs> I don't know, I'm not really, you know, used to, how to say, to use the, my online life, because it's, every people I needed to, to talk to or to see, even my friends, they were like, they lived close to me. So mm -hmm. I didn't really have even the need to, you know, to use uh, social networks or uh, online tools to, to contact them or hear from them. And it's like, it's now something that I still feel like I have to do it. Mm -hmm. Because probably personally, I wouldn't use uh, social resources that much. I'm not really passionate about being online and using computers and stuff. I'm not really that kind of person. I'm more the, the book person. <laughs> what are you passionate about? Uh, reading. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, um, literature and music and, you know, all the all different things you can do even without uh, online tools. That's why I never had the need to use them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Great. <laughs> no, and you know, I don't think everybody has to be online all the time. The question mm. is, what is the strategic use for what you want to accomplish? So let's say, um, well, I co-wrote a book, okay? I needed to, to talk to lots of people in order to write that book, so the online environment allowed me to interview people who are, you know, thousands of miles away. Um, and, the, and certainly the online environment helps me sell the book because we sell it on Amazon.com. Yeah. Um, I don't want to read a book online. I don't want to write online, though I could. And my blog, in a way, is a little bit of you know, trying out ideas online. But it's, it's when it's strategic. Um, that's the point. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I like that um, Juliana brought up the fact that she never had to use it before. I mean, um, I came from a very international school where people travel around a lot. So sometimes you meet people, become very close friends with them, and three months later, they move on to the next country. Mm -hmm. um, so for, for me, social networking became a very easy way of keeping in contact with them instead of writing letters or using Skype the whole time. You know, Facebook was a very nice way of just quickly sending a message and saying, hey, are you still alive? <laughs> and I was talking about this with Kirill as well, and he had the same thing. He, he's very much not anti-Facebook, but he doesn't enjoy using it because he never had to use it in such a way. Mm -hmm. So I think that's very interesting, the different purposes people have when they start to use a social network like that. Yeah, I had to use it because all my kids were on it, and that's the only way to keep up to date. <laughs> <laughs> I actually started using Facebook when I had a, a, a project somewhere in my fourth year, that I was doing sort of extra and then there was about social media and, and about NGOs and that was a few years ago so it was all new and, and, and strange and weird so, so what can we do about it and then we learned about Facebook and then I thought I'm not gonna join Facebook am I? <laughs> okay so maybe I should join because then you know what you're saying sort of and that was the first time I created a Facebook account no social sort of invitation or insights to do that, whatever. Yeah. Just this thing. And then, and then automatically it has social sort of engagement because people start noticing that you're on Facebook and then you just start connecting in a different way. So it's sort of automatical that happens. It's like the adoption of the telephone. Oh, it was this big radical thing. Oh, no, I'm not going to talk on the telephone. And then... Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Et voila. You're in Et it. Voila. You're sneaky. part of it. Yeah. Speaking of being a part of it, I'm going to have to go pretty soon because if you could see my to-do list, you would see it's very wicked right now. <laughs> and I should be getting to the to-do list. Yes. <laughs> And okay. I imagine you guys are getting to eating. Yeah, I'm well, like halfway through probably. avoiding my rice. <laughs> like I said, I still have to cook my food. Yes. 
go home, probably. <laughs> you know, maybe we could have a virtual potluck dinner one night. Oh, oh that sounds really that. funny. <laughs> yeah. Let's do that. We can be creative, we can learn in different contexts, and we can have fun while we're doing it. <laughs> I like that. That's good. <laughs> I like that punchline as an ending. Okay, anybody else have a last word? Um, I don't, who's staying? Because Dana says that she's going to come on just now. Okay, um, the, the only problem is when I leave, it ends the broadcast. Okay, I'll make a new uh, broadcast. I'll make a new hangout. Has anybody got a verified YouTube account with their phone number thingy? No. No. Okay. I don't know. Haven't checked yet. Besides, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave you too. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> So I'll post the I'll post the URL on our website when this one's finished processing. It'll take about a, uh, an hour. Oh, there's Dana. Hello. No Dana here. Oh, it showed <laughs> up and then disappeared. Anyway, right. what I will do is I will disappear. Um, actually, you're gonna have to start a new one. Sorry. Yes, that's fine. I'll start a new one. Okay. I'll Ciao, bellos, bellos. <laughs> <laughs> bye, bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Nice hangout. Yeah, so it was fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cheers.